The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Mikey, how are you, buddy? You know something, T? Things are good, man. We got a beautiful stretch of weather coming up. Uh, how is Easter, T? Easter was good, quiet, just Ellen and I here in Florida, but uh, we're heading out tomorrow, man. I'm, you know, we've, we're ready to come home. We're ready to come home. We've been here three and a half months, Yeah. and the, uh, we're leaving tomorrow morning, which is actually, people are watching this on Friday, so we're actually on the road as you're watching this. Ah. Uh, today's Friday. We are, where are we today? Today we are heading into northern New Jersey. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to coming home, looking forward to the good weather, you know, it's, it's a little uh, bittersweet here because we, we've sold our place. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's so a good next, move, though, Tom. Yeah, uh, you know, I, think, like, I think. Yeah, I we're think. very, very excited because if we didn't, the house that we're, we're now renting starting next year, and the house is magnificent that we're renting. We're oh, really sure. excited about but it. But the other thing is, you know, this thing with hurricanes in Florida and the way the climate is changing, man, I'll tell you, I, I would not want to own property close to the water right well, now. Well, I, I don't I, disagree with you. I, and and this, way here, this way uh-huh. here, you've had 20 years. Yep. You've enjoyed it. You fixed it up really nice. And now you rent. God forbid if a storm was to come in, you're not going to have the anxiety like you used to. Well, not only that, but it's now some, you know, everything else is someone else's headache. But That's the it. Best thing That's is, it. And we're going to get into our guest. The best thing is that, uh, you know, my sister, you know, Anna has a condo here. So we're going right over the water here, right over the bridge. And yeah, the good part is we can still use the amenities here anytime we want because my sister's here. Anyway, this is a very, very special show for me. Um, and it's also, I think, a special show for anybody who has a relative or themselves has rheumatoid arthritis. Um, Rheumatoid arthritis is, uh, I've had it for 20 years now, and uh, it's a very hard uh, disease uh, to explain. Uh, You know, sometimes people say, well, you have have arthritis? Uh, Yeah, you do have arthritis, but it's not osteoarthritis, and it's hugely, hugely different. But the woman that is coming on with us now has become an inspiration not only to me, and a big inspiration to me, but an inspiration to uh, people across the country uh, who uh, suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. This, this young gal, uh, was diag- she was diagnosed 26 years ago at the age of 19, and the doctor told her that she would never, ever be able to have children and that in 10 years, she'd be in a wheelchair. Wow. Let's fast forward to today, though. <laughs> Not only does she have five beautiful kids, but this woman has run 11 marathons. Uh, and she's running the Boston Marathon next week. She's going to be in a full Iron, Ironman uh, uh, marathon. She's run half marathons, triathlons. She is such an inspiration to the rheumatoid world. I, I said, we have to get her on because not just she's inspiring to everybody. I mean, just the, the worth ethic and her old attitude, her whole attitude towards life in general. So, uh, Jody Pettit, welcome. I am so I'm on it to have you. How are you? Good. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm always grateful for you and your kind words. Well, you have uh, you've been an inspiration to me. Now you're in Utah, correct? And a little snow. Do you have? Uh, low <laughs> record setting for our state snow. Yeah, it's been a long, cold winter. How, how much snow do you have on the ground right now? Um, it actually got warm ones over the weekend. We've only got a couple inches here and there, but I, I mean, you've had like over five feet. You said right. Last weekend, or last week, we did. Luckily, we were in California, so I missed it. <laughs> oh my God! Five feet of snow, Mikey. Mikey, you be in heaven. Oh that's man, amazing. that's a dream come true. Several feet in the valley. Jody, um, you know, Mike. Mike is is not. I mean, Mike knows about, and Mike will jump in here, of course, uh, about rheumatoid arthritis through me. And Mike has had to put up with 
with a lot of what I've had to go through for many, many years. And, you know, Mike has his own uh, issues too. Um, but can you give our audience a brief overview of what exactly rheumatoid arthritis is? Well, then I say arthritis, but it's really, it's an autoimmune disease. It's systemic. Um, so it's a chronic inflammatory disorder and it affects many joints, also, like your small joints in your hands and fingers, but it can attack anywhere. I've, it's attacked my lungs. I had a partial lung collapse during one of my half Ironman races. Um, can attack your heart, your eyes, anywhere. It usually attacks cartilage. That's why it's in the lining of joints. Yeah. It feels like you have the flu and you've been hit by a dump truck at the same time. <laughs> you know, uh, the first time, and what, the, what was the very first rheumatoid flare that you had? Do you remember? Because I remember mine. My, mine was my feet, my feet and my hands. We, I was 19 and we just moved and I'd been washing all the walls and my hands just kept swelling. And I just couldn't figure out why. And, and I worked and I'm trying to type and I can't use my hands. I couldn't walk because my feet felt like I had marbles in them and oh, yeah. slippers and getting misdiagnosed because it, it takes some time to figure out what's going on. I, I was on a golf course, Mike. Um, <laughs> I didn't know you played golf. I was on the golf course with, with uh, my cousins. We were having a family golf outing and I was probably on the 15th hole and my shoulders started acting up. Just started almost like I had a toothache. How old are you it, here, Tom? Uh, 20 years ago. So I was what? Uh, 70, 74. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like I had a toothache in my shoulder. And I just, I said, guys, I can't even lift my shoulder anymore. I walked off. Wow. That quick. Uh, came home. It was throbbing. You know, that toothache feeling, Jody, that I'm talking about in deep, deep in the joint. And then by that, four hours later, it, 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 the pain was gone. A hundred percent gone. I says, wow, this is, this was weird. That night, my pinky finger swelled up like a balloon. And I'm saying, what the hell is going on? And then it just progressed uh, from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You feel like you're crazy that you don't know what's going on. Cause it, it moves around. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Then the next day was my knee. I had to go in and get my knee drained and the rest is, is history. Jody, what like, causes the, the deformity? Uh, you see some people's fingers are all bent or toes. And I were, but now I have silicone joints and my, my one, my hands are like an inch shorter. Okay. It's called, what's it called the swan neck deformity, but it's as the ten, as the joints get eaten, the tendons fall off and they start pulling your fingers sideways. Ah. So it's the lack of having the joint function and then the tendons moving and just twisting the joint sideways is Jody is, hasn't that hasn't that kind of uh because of and we're going to talk about the drugs that are out there now uh and then then we, we want to get into the marathoning but because of the introduction of the biologics and jack inhibitors that is not as pronounced as it used to be correct like my my hands like for instance i have my hands are always sore from my ra but i mean then you know i have i have nodules but they're not they're functional they're functional, they're not deformed. Because of the biologics and jack inhibitors, the new, the new medicines that are out, has that decreased the deformity in, in not just hands, but in overall in RA? Yeah, greatly. I know a lot of surgeons don't see those deformities anymore because a lot of people get on the drugs early and they do see relief and it makes a big difference in their treatment. All right, we are chatting with uh, Jody Pettit, uh, one of the, probably the most elite marathoner in the country with rheumatoid arthritis. Let's talk about your first road race. When was your first road race? My first road race, first one I did was Provo City Marathon, and it was in May of 2011. And I signed up for it. I had gone to three different surgeons and had begged them to cut my feet off. I was in so much pain. Oh. I had angry. Itis inflammation, my joints were inflamed, my tendons were inflamed. I was in slippers and I could barely walk. And I had a, my husband had a friend that came over and he was a marathon runner. And he said, you can do it. Because he was talking about his run and it just sounded so cool to me. And I, he's like, just go get fitted for shoes. And he was so ignorant. 
that he made me think maybe if I got the right shoes, I could run a marathon <laughs> and it'll speed up the damage and the doctors will cut my feet off. Oh, it was not rational, but when you're in that much pain, you don't think rationally. That right. was your mindset, huh? That was my mindset. I just, wow. Because of that, it was, I mean, it hurt. I didn't, I wasn't a runner. I actually, a friend asked me to do a marathon relay. When I, I had never run a 5K when I signed up for the marathon. I did a 5K and half marathon while I trained, but I never, I wasn't, I wore cowboy boots in college to the fitness for life class to run a mile because I didn't run, own run shoes. <laughs> um, she asked me to do this marathon relay. And I had to run five miles and I asked my husband, I'm like, do you think I can run five miles? It's a really long way. It's like, you just signed up to run a marathon. You better be able to do five miles. It was just my, my, my mindset wasn't, right. wasn't there, but I ended up stress fracturing my femoral head because I, I had no respect for the distance. But in training, I wasn't afraid of the pain. So I was hoping it would speed the damage. So I didn't stop me. And then that six months after, because I pushed so far past pain, it took me six hours and 11 minutes because each mile got slower with the pain from the stress fracture. Sure, sure. There's nothing uh, worse. There's nothing so you worse. Ran, so you, you ran with the stress fracture? Yes. I didn't. I thought they just told me I had tight muscles. And by the time I finished, I couldn't walk. And I crawled back into my house. And I had been crawling with Ari for years. Sure. So I'd crawled with babies and we moved. We had a multi-level house with my first baby. And I flared after I had him. And I was trying to crawl up the stairs and not drop him. So we, we moved to a single story home. And I, when I'm going in the house that first marathon, I just started crying. Because I remembered those days I, that I was crawling with the disease that I couldn't walk. And today I, I was crawling because I earned it. I did something physically hard that not everybody does. That's, that's, that's very, very, very enlightening. You know, that's inspiring, actually. Yeah, it just made me, I just, I just bawled. The, yeah. I earned this pain. It was, it's just a totally different mindset to earn pain. Yeah. So, so when you, to get from point A to point B, you say you, run, you ran through the pain. So does it get to a point where it doesn't hurt anymore? It doesn't hurt as bad. Yeah. Actually, the, a lot of the, like, plantar fasciitis got better in my feet. My feet have gotten a lot stronger. And then even this last year, I was ready to amputate last March because six of my toes are dislocated and disjointed at the MCP, MTP joint. So, like, your knuckle and your toe in your feet. So, they're dislocated. They're bone on bone. There's no padding left. So, I mean, so, so when you're running, like you're going to be running 26 miles next week. Uh, I mean, how, what do you, are you wearing special shoes? I mean, what do you, what do you wear for, for running shoes? I, wear, you, I switched last year. I wear ultras. So I wear what's called a zero drop shoe that there's no lift. Most shoes have a lift in your heel. Right. Yeah. To more weight on the forefoot where I have the most dysfunction. So the zero drop is the same height front and back and they're a wide toe box coat so my good twisted toes have room father mikey there you go baby because you should be representing her as her agent and she should be uh, that that shoe company should be sponsoring her yeah, no I mean, question no question right? about it go ahead and mikey you I, I was gonna ask jody uh jody do you feel that uh, there's gonna be a book about your life experiences with the ra in, in the near future I think I have a really good friend that's pushed me for years to do that. I think it would be quite an inspiration, babe. I really do. Tom has the Tom has the all the the ramblings right now. Yeah, we we've it's, it has been Jody. My apologies there for the you know I, we did gangbusters. Uh, Jody over the last year uh, has been sending me tidbits and which you know which we're I'm slowly getting it into a cohesive narrative. Uh, for her, and then hopefully she'll do something with it later. But Jody, once I get back home, uh, it's a lot easier than being in Florida because there's too many distractions down here. That's that's part of it. But uh, we we've made some made some headway. Um, how many operations have you had? Operations. I've had three major hand surgeries. 
the joint replacement in, so I did my dominant hand. I fused my knuckle and my first two fingers that failed twice in the first month. So I did that three times and then all together between feet, hands and elbows, 12 to 15 surgeries. 12 to 15 surgeries. So, you know, in the, in the second segment, we're kind of laying the groundwork here, uh, folks, because, you know, uh, so that you can clearly understand what rheumatoid arthritis is all about, number one. And then number two, um, take that and put it aside and look at Jody the person and what she's been able to accomplish with her mind. Because I think your mind has a lot to do with uh, all of this, doesn't it, Jody? Mind over matter, yeah. right? Yeah. An attitude. It's, it's really, it's really, really, really uh, enlightening. Um, now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit, talk about some of the marathons you ran, the New York Marathon. We're going to talk about some of the marathons you've run in. But then we're going to talk about, again, this is kind of an educational for, for, for everyone, uh, especially if you have rheumatoid or you have a relative that has rheumatoid. And not just rheumatoid, but psoriatic arthritis. There's so many different uh, components, uh, a lupus uh, in the rheumatoid family. Uh, if you have relatives or you yourself have it, I want to talk about the advances in med medicine over the last 20 years because I know personally that if it weren't for the advances in rheumatoid uh, arthritis uh, medications, I personally would definitely be in a wheelchair. And I think, Jody, you probably would be too. And we could be in the wheelchair race at the marathon together. <laughs> right. All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. Jody's in the house. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple, fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Orthopedics Northeast and Essex Orthopedics have joined forces as Mobility Bone and Joint Institute to bring improved access and outstanding medical care. While our name has changed, our dedication to exceptional care remains the same as it has for the past 30 years. Same location, 16 Pelham Road, Salem, New Hampshire. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. 
Kelton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy and Mike Kunsla, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazia Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazia Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn buttery, tender, lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazia Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you soon. soon. Okay, we are back and we are chatting with Jody Pettit, a marathoner, a RA marathoner. A Mikey Boy's in the house. I'm in Florida. My last day in Florida for uh, until next winter. Jody, um, let's talk about some of the marathons you 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 know you, you you ran in Boston once before. You ran New York. Tell me about the New York Marathon versus Boston. Um, I ran Boston in 2018. I qualified in 2017. It was the worst weather year I think on record. <laughs> and they talked about hills, and all I remember is wind and rain. <laughs> and it's still amazing. Spectators loved it, but I'm excited to come back. I ran New York as the first major event post pandemic. And it was really humbling. We had millions of spectators. Wow. Lining the street for the whole marathon. If you ma imagine when a boxer, a famous boxer goes to the ring and everyone comes and they, you know, the cheering and you've got all the yelling around them. Wow. When you're like through New Jersey and different areas that, you just, you couldn't even hear yourself through the screaming, but. And it was constant, right? For the whole it was marathon. Constant, the whole marathon. And just trying to not cry because what it meant, it was the celebration of life. Sure. After everything that New York went through with the pandemic. Yeah. So it, it was really cool to be able to be a part of it. Mikey. Yeah. I, I have a question for you, Jody. Um, for our listeners that have suffered with the gout, uh, it's a, Exact, very, 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 very painful. Is there any correlation between RA and the gout that you know of? Um, gout is the uric, uric acid crystals. Yeah. yeah. Form yep. in there. I think there's similar mechanisms to why your body does it. Oh, but okay. Rheumatoid arthritis is actually you have antibodies against self and it's destroying the, usually the cartilage or the synovial fluid, where gout is. It should be waste material that your kidney's filtering out, and it's yeah. crystallizing, it's and a, it's getting stuck in the tissue. I, I was just wondering, because I'll tell you, chronic pain, Tommy, yeah. you, you know, if anybody knows, uh, it, it can really wear on yeah, you. It, it, affects, it affects your whole life. It's It affects your family's life. Absolutely. And you know, you know something, uh, yeah. Mikey, you know, you're making a good point. You know what has always been for me, and that's why the exercise, and Jody, uh, you know, I want to get your, your take on this. For me, you know, like right now, because of my knee, I can't bicycle. But, you know, exercise for me has always been my, my, my blood, my lifeline, because it's, if you don't, at least I suffer from what's called rheumatoid fatigue and a lot of people with rheumatoid it's it's they're always tired fatigue jody i mean do you find obviously with your running and exercising that really helps absolutely um i say it took me 10 years to figure it out because i spent a lot of time in bed a lot of time laying on the floor playing with my babies but when i started exercising i said the six months after the marathon when i couldn't move and yeah. learned to walk again made me realize um, that was really making a big difference. I felt better. I need to keep doing this. Yeah. And I've had an exercise streak since December of 2000. 
13, that I move every day with purpose because I know even when I feel horrible and you can't get out of bed, if I'll get up and do it and flush my body, I'll feel better. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I could. That's why I'm, I'm anxious to get home so that I can, you know, I have an appointment uh, with uh, with my uh, orthopedic guy, and so I can get get on my bike again because you know I was biking eight to ten miles a day, and I just absolutely loved it. You know, for me, and that's that's plenty. Um, so you you ran Boston, you ran uh, New York. What other marathons have you run? Ran Chicago last fall, and that was a lot of fun. And then I've done a lot of local ones. I've Mount Charleston in Las Vegas is where I qualified for Boston in 2017. And then I ran Phoenix marathon, New York, big cottonwood. I DNF'd it's a Utah one. It's a really steep and I have a lot of hip pain with the RA Yeah, end up stress fracturing my femurs that I ended up cutting myself short on that one. Um, just to, I didn't want to go back on crutches with another injury with the disease. Right. And then you, what about triathlons? Triathlons, I. Which is, I, well, I can't even fathom. I, well, I kept stress <laughs> fraction. My goal was to qualify for Boston. That was my dream. I didn't want to do it on a charity. I wanted to qualify. I didn't even know if I'd ever make it there. I just, I wanted to meet the goal. Sure. And I kept, it, after my third stress fracture in my femoral head, rotating legs. And I think part of it has to do with your bone marrow and the disease itself and why I keep doing that. But I thought I need something big to make me train. So I signed up for a half Ironman because I'm like, I, I need to cross train and it has to be big or I won't want to do it. Big isn't the word. <laughs> yeah. So I did a, I did Oceanside in California. No, Vine Jersey. Man. Yeah. Did Vine Man in California. And I thought that I could do more. And I had, I met a friend there and we'd become really good friends and me and her, we talked each other into doing a full Ironman four, four months later. We did Iron Man. <laughs> oh, All right, so why don't you tell our audience what a full marathon consists, a full triathlon <laughs> consists of? Uh, Ironman distance triathlon is a 2.4 mile swim. In Hold on, Mikey, 2.4 mile swim. Yeah. I'm lucky then, if I can use, go across my exactly. pool 10 times. <laughs> Open water, usually cold. Yeah. Um, you get out and you go put your shoes on and you get on your bike and you ride 112 miles. Okay. 112. I go eight to 10 and I'm exhausted. 112 mile bike ride and a two and a half mile swim. Go ahead. Continue. And then you get off and switch your shoes and you go run a 26.2 mile marathon. All <laughs> back to back with... You know, no breaks other than switching your shoes. And so, Mikey, should we try that, you and I? What do you wow, think? Wow, that's God bless you, girl. That's I mean, that's I, a, that's I, hot I, to believe. I mean, it Chrissy, really is. I know Chrissy. Chrissy, our producer, uh, obviously has her headset on. Chrissy, think about that: two and a half mile swim, uh, a hundred mile bike ride, and a twenty six mile run, all in one sitting. What do you think, Chrissy? I mean, I'm tired just after we <laughs> talked about it. How much? Yeah, no, how much a, time? Incredible. How much time, Jody, is involved with something they like that? They give you 17 hours. If you're over by one minute, you didn't finish. I did it. So it's 140.6 miles total. My, my time was 1348. And it was Ironman, Arizona. And it was during a monsoon. So I say, oh if, my God. If, there's, if there's rain in the forecast. You're going to get it. I'm you attract it. There's going to be rain in the forecast. Uh, so uh, what was the recoup time from that, from that triathlon for you? Truthfully, a full Ironman, because you train in a different zone. You stay yeah. like zone two, zone three, where when I, at least for me, when I'm running a marathon, I'm trying to qualify and run fast. That That's as fast as I can go, that you're redlined. I healed much faster. I came home from my Ironman and ran up and down the streets with my three-year-old because he wanted to race. Just where amazing. A, Unbelievable. A marathon, I'm hobbling for and where it takes me about a month to recover, at least. You know, uh, you're, 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 say, you're, you're, you're giving some information out that a lot of people don't really, you know, understand. Not, but now that you're the way you're explaining it. So there are certain types of exercise that seem a lot worse than other types of exercise, but the recoup time is actually easier. Correct. 
really, and well, for this marathon, because I, I have a lot more damage than I've had in the past. My yeah. disease is progressing. I've done a lot of my runs and I'll spend three hours in the, I pull run with a float belt. So you're in deep water and you're mimicking the motion of running. And it between two marathons with a stress fracture, I did all of my runs in the pool, except one. And I took 20 minutes off my time. It's what got me from dreaming about qualifying for Boston to making it within reach of an actual goal. Now, who are you, uh, you're, uh, you have a sponsor for Boston. Who are you running for? I'm running for American Red Cross. The Red Cross. And isn't there an arthritis walk coming up to? Uh... Yes. This summer is the 75th anniversary for the um, Arthritis Foundation. And they're doing, there's walks across the nation. Utah's walk is on March 20th at Riverton Park. Boston has one as well. Theirs is on March 6th at Herder Park. And so they're trying to, it's the 75th anniversary. A lot of people haven't been out since COVID. So we're really trying, I'm on the board here in Utah for the Western Rockies. So trying to get people to come out and participate. And then the Arthritis Foundation has a really cool program this year that they're lighting up buildings across the country, historic buildings. Boston City Hall is one of them that'll be lit up green on May 6th. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to get involved with that when I get home. I'll track down. Uh, actually, you may have that info. You, info. Yeah, send, send me the info for that because I'd like to get involved with that. We can do something uh, to help them out. Um, okay, let's talk uh, for a minute. Uh, we have, we have some, some time left. Uh, the advances in rheumatoid arthritis. When you know, when I was first diagnosed, when you were first diagnosed, uh, there are certain types of medication called biologics and jack inhibitor, inhibitors. Jack inhibitors did not even exist uh, when we were both first diagnosed. Because I think you were uh, 26 years ago, so you you were you had a six year jump on me uh, for your diagnosis. Uh, were the biologics your first drugs were what methotrexate and what else? Honestly, I didn't go the drug route originally. I didn't feel good about it, but what's interesting is I did everything, but everything alternative you could name and some things helped. Some things didn't. I think same with drugs, your body works around it. But when I did start the drugs, um, I failed everything that was available 25 years ago. And I, and it, it told me I made that right decision because at that young age, if I had failed all those things, then I didn't have the mental strength to get through it. But so it's one of the reasons I work with the Arthritis Foundation is they are funding new research and the newer drugs. Like I've been on drugs that have only been available two years in the United States. And the JAK inhibitors is just one class. They call them DMARDs. It's drug disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. So they're, so each one, so JAK inhibitors work on one part of the immune system. There's another one that's an interleukin-6 inhibitor. I'm on one. It's called rituximab, but it's, it's anti-CD20 monoclonal mm -hmm. antibody therapy. So all of them work differently, but you're trying to inhibit or stop a part of your immune system from working properly so that you can't start that inflammation cascade. So in one, it helps you with controlling your disease, but also in another way is going to make you more susceptible to viruses. Right. Because it suppresses your immune system. Right. Um, you know, for me personally, it was, they've been tremendous help to me. Um, you know, I, everybody's seen the commercials for Enbrel and for yeah. Zelgens. Um, I started uh, after two years on Enbrel and Enbrel worked phenomenally well for me for about seven or eight years. And then they stop working, so they move you to another one. And uh, I, you know, for the last seven or eight years, I've been on Zelgans, which Jody and I, you've, we've talked about it. It's kind of stopped working for me, or it's in the process of not working as well. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get on something else, and we're we're looking into what you're on, right, Texan? Uh, I have a, I have an appointment. Um, it's a hefty. I mean, they're I, expensive. It's I'm a, sorry. I said they're expensive. It's a fifty thousand dollar infusion. I know it is. I know it is. Wow. Thankfully, but, I have good insurance. It. Well, thank God for, for the government, Medicare. So a, <laughs> thank God. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a $50,000. $50, well, you only, it's, it's an infusion that you only get twice a year for four, four hours? Get, no, two six-hour infusions, two weeks apart, twice a year. Twice a year. So, uh, you know, we're going to look into that. But as I said, if it wasn't for uh, Medicare, then I'd be uh, taking uh, Advil. Uh, but it's uh, it, the, 
what does the future hold? I mean, listen, you're in the medical profession. Um, what does the future hold for the next wave of uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, drugs? It takes a long time to get things developed. I actually went to a conference with the Arthritis Foundation in December and they had doctors speaking about what's coming. And there's some really cool drugs. I can't remember all their names. They all have scientific names, but some of them have been in the works for a while. A lot of them come from cancer research. And like the one I'm on is specifically designed for lymphoma, but there's also some very specific ones for psoriatic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. So that's the advances I think are coming. And it was, it was one of those other moments where I get really emotional and want to cry because to see the progress and that we are making progress. And it's I been, it's just it's been a long time to get to go through all those studies and make sure that it's safe. Yeah. I if mean, it's been say safe. There's a lot of side effects. So oh yeah. No, no, there are. And, but you know something, you know, I, I, I take all of that with a grain of salt and Mike, you know, Mikey, you've had some major surgeries. You've had some major drugs uh, because of your surgeries. But, you know, you see these commercials and it says that, okay, if you take this and then they speak real fast, the chances you can get lymphoma, you can get this, 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 and this. <laughs> Side but effects. You, but, but, Mikey, when you dig deep, when you dig deep, uh, using Embrel as an example, I mean, when I heard the side effects, I saw an Embrel commercial, and I, I, I saw the, so, the side effects. I was what am I, nuts? I'm better off rolling the dice and not taking it. But then when you dig deep, lymphoma, uh, the, the chances of you getting lymphoma versus the public, instead of two out of every 200,000 people, four out of every 200,000 people may yeah. get it. So, I mean, you have to really look at, you know, dig, well, dig, dig. untreated can cause lymphoma. Exactly, exactly. So you really have to look at the, the cost and the benefit. I guess that's, that's the way you have to you know, look at it. I do you know, feel, Tommy, though, that we have some doctors that, you know, you, you're complaining your pain is getting worse, so all they do is up the medication they're giving you. At one time, they had me on four major drugs, and... I was a space cadet. I, yeah. Seriously, yeah. I, I, I was completely uh, I, out of it. And I said, this, this is crazy. Uh, so I went and I started interviewing some other doctors who had a different approach to what my problem was. Yeah. And, you know, thank God, because of the epidurals, uh, you know, it's totally different. My whole, my outlook, my, my clarity, uh, I'm functional. Uh, no, anyway, Mikey, I, I, I mean, listen, I've witnessed, you know, we've been together for a long time and I've witnessed, I mean, I, I, I'm in awe and we've talked about it, how, how you have really stayed ahead. You've stayed ahead of the battle because I know some of the debilitating things that have, that have happened to you. Jody, um, I read about, maybe you can shed some light on this, and this isn't just for rheumatoid people, but uh, they're doing a study in England. The vagus nerve is the largest nerve in your body, correct? Right. I just read a book about this. They're doing, they're doing. Tommy, a what study. is it? What is it? The vagus nerve, Mikey, is Are the largest you, you're saying nerve. Vegas, like Vegas. It sounds like Las Vegas, but okay. it's spelled a little differently. But it's the largest nerve in your body, and it it controls a lot of things in your body, from your digestion to everything. I read that they're doing a study, Jody, where they're implanting uh, a little microscopic thing, and they are, that that kind of uh, gives a little jolt to the vagus nerve, and they're using it to treat, or they're going to use it potentially to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Do you know anything about that? I haven't heard about that. I have a friend who has another autoimmune disease that had a surgery that had something to do with her vagus nerve and stimulating it. And it had huge success on her health. So I, I believe it. And they just read a book on stud, on the vagus nerve. It's, it's some exciting. Yeah. So they're, 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 that's so, what they're doing. It's so if going, I understand you, Tommy, that's like a TENS unit. Is that what it is? It gives you an electrical well, no, it's impulse? Just, it's just, yes, but it's just a little microscopic thing, Mike, that they're going to inject into you right under your skin or something next to the vagus nerve really? and it stimulates it. Yeah, it's wow. supposed to be amazing. And they're doing a big, big study in England right now on it, uh, which is, which is I, crazy. I didn't know that. 
Hey, Jody, we got a couple, we got a minute, a minute and a half left in this segment. Um, what was, what was your favorite marathon? Was it New York? New York was my favorite. But do you like Boston? Yes. I'm excited to come back to Boston. It's a great city. Where are you guys, Boston. where are you guys staying? We are staying in Back Bay. Oh, nice. Excuse me. Oh, it's nice and, nice could, and close. That's all we could find. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's pricey. Um, is the whole gang going? Just me and Josh, and I have my the ladies I run with. We're running it together. So, are you are you going to have any di- downtime for a meal, a one good meal somewhere? I hope so. We should. You have to. Friday. Have you been to the North End? Yes. Little Italy. Yes, you sent me to a fabulous place last time we were there. Yeah, I think so it's the best that, Italian. Oh, that's right. They went to Barbara's. That's right. They went to La Suma. I was going to ask you for a recommendation again. That was yeah, we can, uh, we, I can. I can email you something. Uh, yeah, you got to go back into the north end, especially during marathon time, because they'll really take, best. and especially kind of let them know that you're a marathoner. Uh, I have a friend that uh, owns a restaurant on Hanover Street. I'm going to email him. His name is Hobbit Frank. Good guy. Good guy. All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. We have one more segment. Uh, Jody Pettit is in the house, the face of... Uh, rheumatoid arthritis athletes in the country. Uh, you know, at some point in time, you have to be the face of the Arthritis Foundation. I mean, what are those people waiting for? Are you kidding me? I mean, that, I'm sorry? You're too kind. No, I'm serious, man. I mean, you could, you could so help them. Yes, Hang you're in an this. inspiration, girl. Inspiration. We'll be right back. Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and can never agree where to go. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with the great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Kitchen and Pizzeria. Me? I love the elegant romantic vibe Seaglass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that make it the place you want to visit each and every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of a cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Concert Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all of these great places, and they treat everyone like they are Mike Lamazzo. Best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all this fun is right at your fingertips. You can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappola. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. 
issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Debert Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Debert Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzler, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazia Italian Restaurant in Drakeet, Massachusetts. Grazia Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn buttery, tender, lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazia Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you soon. soon. Okay, we are back in chatting with Jody Pettit, Jody Brunson Pettit. Uh, That's my name. I know. Marathoner. Uh, Jody has... Uh, had rheumatoid arthritis for about 26 years. Uh, she has refused to let it stop her. Jody, um, let's talk about your, uh, the positive effect that you've had on people. Um, you have such a, a positive outlook. I mean, you refuse to let let it stop you. What words of advice do you have for people? And I'm not necessarily... You know, people with just rheumatoid arthritis, but people with that have debilitating uh, uh, physical ailments. Do you have anything you know that you want to say to them? Um, I have a, a sports metaphor, but I think it applies in life in general. That I think we get caught up in worrying about everything, all the what ifs that stay in your box. What can you affect right now? What do you have control over? Worry about those things. All the what ifs that are out in the future. You, if you're focusing on them, it's too overwhelming. So it's just stay in your box. And I like Disney movies, kids. I like Dory. Her song just keeps swimming. And just remind yourself you can do hard things. You know, Mikey, um, <clears throat> whether or not you believe it, your mantra has been that all these years too. You have absolutely refused. I have never ever you, I've, I've asked you this Mikey a zillion times and I've said, Mike, how are you feeling today? You have never said, I feel like crap. And I know that you feel like crap sometimes, but you've never ever said that. You said, I'm doing well, Tom. Some days, Tom, you know, even trying to get out of bed is a measure. You have to lean up against the wall to walk the wall to stand upright. Uh, and you know, you, some people see you and they say, hey, what, there's nothing wrong with him. Look at you him. You look as healthy as a horse. Six foot two. Uh, but you know, walk in my footsteps, Jody, for 24 hours. Then you tell me how you, you feel. And the only person who really knows is you. And Tom, you've done the exact same thing. I do have a question, uh, Jody, regarding your family life. How much, you have five children. I heard you say that. How much of an influence has your husband been in your pursuits? He's always been my greatest supporter, and I'll always be grateful. When, when I was, and I say I've had RA for 26 years, I was diagnosed at 19, but I had symptoms back to childhood, so I had juvenile RA. But diagnosed, we'd been married six months, and I went home, like, I was devastated. And I went home, and I just, I said, our first date was snow skiing. We were active. We hiked. And I'm looking at a wheelchair and I said, you know, we've only been married six months. We planned on having a family. We can 
get divorced or get an annulment and you can go start over with someone else. I can't have the life we were promised. And he just looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> like if we can't have kids, I'll take care of you. But that speaks volumes. That speaks he's volumes. Up and downs like everybody, but he's but you, always been my biggest supporter and that's even, a little, but I don't you, like that. I think you can do it. He's, you know, when I feel even the, the pool running between marathons, I'd gotten the diagnosis. I had the stress fracture the first time. He's like, and I'm sobbing. He's like, well, what can you do? So he's always helped me look outside my box. I herniated the discs in my neck just before my first half Ironman. And I couldn't turn my head without losing function and not being able to see. It was weird. It cut off the, the oh. blood flow to my brain. He's like, well, what about a snorkel? Then you don't have to turn your head. <laughs> so he's always helped me stay Amazing. in my box, number one, and think outside the box to know what I can influence right now. Judy, uh, Jody, your kids are very active, too. I mean, you guys, I mean, I see your Facebook post. I mean, you guys are nonstop, your entire family. Wow. If, you're not, if you're not whitewater rafting, you're snowshoeing or skiing or something. I mean, you guys, like, don't stop. I appreciate every moment, and the kids are pretty active. My boys are into high, intense sports, and they scare me. They get hurt, but they're living. How old, how old are your children, may I ask? 23. My son's 23. My daughters are 21 and 20, and then I have a 17 and 14-year-old, two boys. And you're out in Utah? Yes. Never been there. Mikey, you ever been to Utah? I have not, Tom. Beautiful, beautiful country out there, huh, That's Jody? what they say. It's a beautiful state. It's an outdoor playland, so we, we enjoy it. Are you from uh, Utah originally? Uh, yeah, my dad lives in Arizona, so I spent my summers in Phoenix. And the rest of the year in Utah, I had it backwards. And, and Josh is from Utah, too? Yeah, he spent his whole life here as well. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Uh, I mean, I've heard it's wonderful, beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful things uh, about it. Had... He's ready to leave. I'm sorry? That he's tired of winter. He's ready to leave. Well, there's something to be said about that. I mean, that's why I'm in Florida. I did, and I, believe me, the, the New England, uh, the Boston winters are nowhere near as tough as yours. But I kind of like the 85 degree weather. I'm just, you know, I just like it. <laughs> you know, uh, we are chatting with uh, Jody Pettit. We've got a couple of minutes left, uh, Jody. Um, I wanted to ask you about, again, getting back to the Arthritis, Arthritis Foundation. You're on the board there. Um, are you happy with the work that the Arthritis Foundation does? Yes. The thing that I'm most excited about is what the, the work that they do for the children with, with Juvenile RA. They, they do a summer camp and they connect kids. That's something that hasn't happened much since COVID. A lot of things got in every aspect of life got put on the back burner, but that they're working to bring back. And then the work that they do to bring people together and give to provide information and knowledge. And then they also fund research. Jody, I wanted to ask a question that I, I'm, I'm glad it just like entered my brain. Um, what the, Immunosuppressive drugs that everybody takes for rheumatoid arthritis, you're walking a fine line, as you said, because you're more susceptible to infection. Like if I get a nick on my knee, you know, it, it doesn't stop bleeding in five minutes. And sometimes it takes two days or three days to heal, really? which is common. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is very common uh, when you're on an immunosuppressive drug. Do you take... I mean, you're kind of like fighting a battle because should I be taking, for instance, uh, using vitamin C or vitamin D as an example, should I be taking more milligrams of vitamin A, uh, vitamin D or vitamin C, which builds up your immune system, or are you defeating the purpose by doing that? I'm not a doctor, but I don't think you're, personally, I don't think I'm defeating the purpose. I don't do, I get vitamin IVs because I don't think I absorb as well. Right. I'll get them and it's at a cellular level and I can visibly see my inflammation drop within a few hours of getting those IVs. But in, you're already inhibiting part of your immune system with a, with the drug. Right. I don't think that making other parts of it 
function properly or giving it what it needs to keep you healthy counterbalances. That's just my opinion. I know it's been a debate ongoing in that. Yeah, it's, it seems to be. And I, I'm like, I'm always walking a fine line because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very big, I'm very proactive when it comes to supplements, very proactive. Um, you know, I take a zillion different types of vitamins. I try to eat healthy. The only weakness I have is my two martinis at night, which I, by the way, enjoy. Um, That's all that counts. And, which my cheese and crackers with my beautiful wife. So, uh, you know, there's something to be said about quality of life. Tommy, uh, I, I'd like to ask Jody yeah. a question. We got a couple of minutes, Mikey. All right, real quick. Why does RA seem to affect an age group, say, from 30 to 60? Uh, what, what happens to the human? Hormonal. I'm sorry? I think it's hormonal, and it affects more women than men. But is your hormones change? Ah. A lot of times it happens when women hit menopause. And, but okay. even for women, like with my five babies, every single pregnancy, I went into remission and six weeks after I flared horribly, like everything I would have had for the nine months, like slapped me at once. We have about 30 seconds left. Exact same thing happened to me when I had my knee replacement after my surgery, I had no problems at all with my rheumatoid, like none, Fantastic. none, zero zilch. But then as time went on, I had to get back on. Jody, uh, we're just about out of time. I can't thank you enough yeah. uh, for Very jumping informative. on board with us. And I wish you nothing but success in the Boston Marathon. You're, you're running for a lot of people across the country, and all those people are rooting for you. So with that being said, good luck to you. And I will email you or text you a great Italian restaurant to eat in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good all right. day. Thanks, Jody, for coming on with us. Mikey, we'll see you in the studio next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cause I'm tell not, you, but that's okay. That's oh, okay. that hurts. That hurts. <laughs> All right, with that being said, uh, we hope you guys learned a little bit today about rheumatoid arthritis. And not only that, but about what, what it's all about. Just You have to be persistent and think out of the box, but stay in your box, as Jody said. With that being said, remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. Have, have a, a wonderful week. weekend, everybody. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.